Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a Badger Ordnance dead level to properly mount an optic in a Badger Ordnance Condition 1 mount. Um, so here is the Badger Ordnance dead level. It's a uh, tool that doesn't really need a whole lot of introduction. It's pretty well known. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to align this little level here and get it right in the middle. So now that our dead level is aligned, we have our our plumb bob set up right here. So I take my condition one mount and I affix it to the dead level. Finger tight's always good enough for me on this part. Here we're going to use our T15 Torx bit and loosen. I had to readjust the dead level, and raise it up because it was actually too low to use my plumb bob on my bench. So. One of the many nice features about the Badger Ordnance dead level, or, uh, Condition 1 mount is it actually gives you the size of Torx bit that you need to, and the proper torque value for your fasteners, for your ring caps, and the nut on the side. So another one of our sponsors for the video is Arkin Optics. And Arkin Optics um, they sent over a 4 to 16 SH4 mil optic. Sounds pretty darn good to me. So we're going to go ahead and get it mounted up. It comes with bikini covers and it comes with uh, a sunshade, so that's pretty nice. And they also include guys can see it or not but it gives you the torque value for their scope tube so I'm gonna go off of the optic manufacturers torque recommendation so I'm gonna go ahead and get this leveled up so what I like to do is I just use the scope box and I stand it up right behind here. Let me adjust the lighting. And then what I do is I actually shine a light in the objective end of the optic and use the optic kind of like a projector to project. A picture of the reticle. So we're going to adjust just like they did back in elementary school. We're going to adjust our projector so that we can see. So then what I do is I just make sure that it's even with my plumb line. this set up one more time so there's the flashlight going into the scope and then it projects 
pretty faint but it's there and then what I do is I use my feeler gauges and I'll make sure that this gap and this gap are the same before I torque it down to my final value so I'll go ahead and show that some standard feeler gauges. I've been using Badger Ordnance products on on my scopes and stuff for a really long time and man, their quality has never faltered. It has always been top tier for me on everything. And I want to make sure I thank them enough. I can't thank them enough for uh, sending the mount, the dead level, and they sent a whole bunch of other accessories which I'll include in the video as well after I after I get them all mounted up. So if you don't know those guys, go on over to badgerordnance.com and check them out. They are they are top tier. So what I'm gonna do is now that it's even, I'll go ahead and do a single pass at 10 inch pounds and then I'll start here and it'll be easier because I've already got the approximate gap for the front Check one more time. going to go on up to final torque which is 18 and that is how you properly use a badger ordinance dead level and I guess I should go over my torque wrench this is a CDI product um, I'm assuming that that's the model number. Um, it goes from 5 to 40 inch pounds and it's real easy to use. It's got a little dial down here that you pull down to unlock and then it's got your scale here on the front that you can take it up. So it's real good for real good for ring caps. Um, and this is part of the accessory list for the condition one mount. So I believe the first step is to remove the front ring cap. So the next thing I'll do is I'll take and I will slip this underneath, maybe, yep, okay, then I'll take my new ring cap and remove the screws.
And then I'll use the two included Torx head screws to lightly put the under ring on. Now I'll use my feeler gauges again to check my gap on either side of the top ring, the top scope ring cap, and the accessory ring, the lower ring cap. It says to tighten the under ring to 20 inch pounds. But if we remember our arc and optic says to torque to 18 inch pounds. So I have torqued this to 18 inch pounds. And from here, I'll go ahead and install the coaxial laser integration fixture. That takes a 5.30 It says to torque that down to 35 inch pounds. So I will turn and set to 35. That's what it looks like for now. Next I'll be installing our data board and that goes in this socket right here. Actually I'll probably end up putting it up front. That way I can still get my parallax. Now we're gonna install our data board and J-arm for our Trigicon RMR. First step is we're going to take the long screws that came with this, with the data board, and put them in. Then we're going to insert it through here. Something, uh, another really cool feature that I like about the Condition 1 mounts is the ability to be able to mount two accessories in the same spot. So we're actually able to use our Trigicon RMR mount or Delta Point mount or whatever you want and our data board in the same spigot hole and not block where our ejection port is going to be so then we're going to go ahead and tighten this down there's boomer that's my dog by the way This takes a T15. So here's our data board. And it folds. I believe Marty told me it was Hawk Hill. 
Um, so that's a pretty cool product. And now that our J arm is mounted, we can go ahead and mount. We're going to remove this from our dead level. Quit. That's too loud for a little room like this, bud. says to use the supplied waterproof membrane. This uses T10. You know, if I was a smart man, I would have uh, I would have read the instructions first and that would have told me what I needed to torque it to. Well, I think we'll start off at seven inch pounds and I will try and find out what it is. There it is.